One of the most common questions in the world of military aviation is, what's more important innovation or the development of existing technologies? Lockheed Martin decided to answer this not with words, but with deeds by modernizing its F-35 fighters to bring them as close as possible to sixth generation aircraft. And although, at first glance, comparing a fighter jet to an NASCAR race car sounds like a strange joke, this is exactly how Lockheed described their new approach to improving the F-35. Back in early 2024, Lockheed Martin announced a major milestone. The 1000 F-35 airframe rolled off the assembly line. In April 2025, they celebrated another achievement, the 1000 center wing assembly, which makes up about a quarter of the fuselage and is the largest individual component of the aircraft. However, one of the most important components of these fifth generation icons is not their impressively stealthy shell, but their powerful internal systems, so advanced that the F-35 is often described as a computer that just so happens to fly. This isn't surprising, considering the 8.6 million lines of code required even for the penultimate Block 3 F software update. It's frightening to imagine the effort behind the latest Block 4 upgrade. Block 4 will be gradually introduced from the late 2020s through the mid-2030s to avoid critical shortcomings. This update integrates additional Lightning II weapons, including some unique munitions for international customers, improved sensor capabilities, a new n apg 85 AESA radar, expanded ESM bandwidth, and support for the remotely operated video enhanced receiver ROVER. Equally important, the Lockheed team has emphasized agile software development to allow faster updates. A key component of Block 4 is Technology Refresh 3 TR3, which includes a new display, core processor, and memory modules to support increased computing demands. Of course, engine modernization hasn't been forgotten. In addition to improving the Pratt & Whitney F-135 engines currently used in the Lightning II, efforts are underway to develop entirely new adaptive cycle engines. Powertrain upgrades are expected throughout the F-35's life cycle to prepare for future threats and increase capabilities. To this end, the Adaptive Engine Transition Program AETP was launched in 2016. In 2018, Pratt & Whitney signed contracts to develop the XA-101 and XA-100 adaptive cycle engines, respectively, each delivering 45,000 alt of thrust for potential F-35 use. After three years, AET was revised and renamed the Adaptive Engine Development Program, expanding to include a wider range of platforms. By 2022, the F-35 Adaptive Engine Replacement Program was formed to integrate the XA-100 and XA-101. However, in 2023, the U.S. Air Force chose to improve the base F-135 engines via the Engine Core Upgrade ECU, originally called Growth Option 1.0, later known as the Engine Enhancement Package. This update boosts thrust and fuel efficiency by 5% and cooling capacity by 50% to support Block 4. This doesn't mean the Air Force is abandoning XA-100-101 entirely, they may still be integrated into future next-generation Air Dominance NGAD fighters, rather than the F-35. More imminent, however, is the F-35's collaboration with various drones. For example, Project Carrera, developed by Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works division, includes Speed Racer UAVs costing about $1 million each, capable of reconnaissance and electronic warfare. These UAVs will operate in coordination with the F-35 fleet, alongside common multi-mission truck CMNT cruise missiles, which cost around $150,000 per unit and have ranges over 500 miles. Drones will assist pilots by forming a distributed architecture, in which one F-35 pilot can control eight unmanned platforms simultaneously using artificial intelligence and machine learning. These missiles are a more affordable alternative to the AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile. Another more expensive drone, the Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie, costs around $4 million and is part of the U.S. Air Force's low-cost attributable aircraft technology LCAAT program. Designed to accompany F-35s and F-22s, it features stealth technology, a trapezoidal fuselage, V-tail, and S-shaped air intakes. The XQ-58 can operate with or without human control, and even launch from ships, containers, or semi-trucks. The most fundamental support system for the F-35 and NGAD 
will be collaborative combat aircraft CKA new generation of drones operating with manned fighters like the F-22, F-35, and NGAD, often referred to as loyal wingmen. CTAs go far beyond that label by performing air combat, electronic warfare, reconnaissance, strikes, and even psychological operations using AI and modular design. The U.S. Air Force plans to buy about 1,000 CTAs in a 2 to 1 ratio 600 for 300 F-35 and 400 for 200 NGAD fighters. In the future, this could grow to 2,000 or more, with one Lightning II or NGAD aircraft controlling 3 to 5 CCAs. Speaking of the F-35's future, Jim Takelet, CEO of Lockheed Martin, recently stated that the company plans to integrate NGAD-developed technologies into current systems, referring specifically to the F-35. According to him, this means improving the fifth-generation Lightning U to what could be called Fifth Gen Plus. These upgrades focus on integrating AI into all F-35 systems, including piloting. In simple terms, developing an uncrewed Lightning I. What really made headlines, however, were Takelet's words, I challenged the team to deliver 80% of 6th gen capability at 50% of the cost. That sounds like a challenge to make an F-35 NGAD at half the price. On the other hand, Lockheed is not contesting the US Air Force's decision to award the NGAD contract to Boeing. Instead, they're doubling down on the Joint Strike Fighter program, which has become the crown jewel of their portfolio over the last few decades. Unofficially, many media outlets have dubbed this F-35 upgrade NASCAR, or Ferrari, citing Lockheed's own analogy. We're basically going to take the F-35 chassis and turn it into a Ferrari. It's like an NASCAR upgrade, so to speak. Given the likelihood that the F-35 will soon have access to hypersonic missiles, combat lasers, and next-gen avionics just like 6th gen fighters, it raises an important question. Why do we need NGAD if we already have NGAD at home? That NGAD at home being the F-35. And if a Super F-35 appeared today, dozens of allied countries would be lining up tomorrow to place their orders. After all, even if NGAD has an export version, there's no guarantee its cost will be feasible for US partners. So, what do you think? Will Lockheed succeed in creating its own near-NGAD fighter at half the cost? Or is this just wishful thinking on the CEO's part? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.